the child support. Did you ever feel that way? Look, I love you, Mom, but, you know, I definitely felt that way a little bit, you know? I love my mom, too, but, like... You feel that way a little bit? No, I didn't feel like I was the child support. I felt like that that was a part of the deal that was kind of like... I mean, it, it, you can't help but feel a certain type of way yeah. about certain things. Yeah. And it just seems like it's weird as shit for the court to be like, that's what that kid's worth. Right? I was worth $300 a month. You know? Back in the 2000s. I, I just feel like it's weird to be like, yeah, that kid's worth about 600 a month. No, I think this it's... This kid's I worth think about 300 a month. I think it's like... Whoever is paying the child support, primarily, usually the father, it's like dependent on how much they make, and then it's like a percentage of that. Is that correct? I don't know. Yeah, I just know because I know weird. kids who are like rich, and they it's like crazy money a month, or like alimony. Like Brennan, crazy. Uh, Brennan Fraser was divorced by his wife at the top, like at the very end of the like mummy. mummy situation, and then. Right after that, his situation financially changed drastically. It was like but an even absurd like 10 amount. Ten years later, he's paying the end of the mummy franchise money yeah. for his kids, and it's like, um, Your Honor, Your Majesty, I don't make that money yeah, no more, and no. they were like too fucking bad. No. <laughs> yeah, the whole situation is, um, it's hard. I just feel like it kind of can build resentment. And it's Absolutely. usually a one-way street. It's usually Absolutely. a one-way street. I don't care if anybody gets mad about it. Anybody wants to say some shit about it. Fucking the um, shit that I've seen firsthand in my life. It's 100% always the man who pays child support. I have never met a woman who paid child support. I have met women who have lost custody of their children. Mad props to my dad for not asking my mom for child support. I went to uh, live with my dad in middle school. My parents separated before I was like a year old. Yeah. Uh, for good reason. And, you know, my mom's financial situation was very lopsided. My dad wasn't rich when I was growing up with him. You could argue now that he's doing really well. But when I lived with him, it was like a very lower middle class situation and he could have used help yeah it would have helped him but he did not ask my mom for child support and that's something i commend him for i really appreciate that he didn't because he had all rights to and could have won something but he knew that her situation wasn't that great yeah. so he didn't ask her for child support but i think it's a thing that can build like resentment for a parent towards their kid for having to give money because the way it's set up is oh, like oh okay I understand what like, you're saying I have to now hand money over to this bitch and I don't live with her or have a relationship with her for a reason and here she's got this hotline on my bank account yeah to use against me and manipulate me it shouldn't be like that but it, it 100% is, it is, is like that I Dude. mean like mm, I love both of my parents and I I I definitely have felt that way as a child. I grew up, I was poor. My mom and my dad, poor, mm -hmm. poor, poor. And $300 a month was really hard for my dad to come by. And yeah. I feel like a lot of that time, you know, as a kid, it was like, well, where's my fucking $300, mom? And it's not like that, you know? There's no. electricity, there's groceries, there's all this other shit. But then when it was time to do certain things like my yearly school shopping, it was split 50-50. And that always felt uh -huh. really fucking unfair to me. Um, well, you know, I've seen a lot of times where that kind of stuff don't even come into play. Where the dad is still buying school clothes, oh yeah. still doing all the other shit, and paying child support. But also, I'm not a divorced person with a child, and I feel like my parents did very well co-parenting in regards, because they are completely the opposite. Uh -huh. Like, my mom and my dad, if you could put two people and just be like, this person is like the yeah. complete opposite version of you. That's my parents. And so, yeah. like, I got 
both of that. Yeah. And it made me a really fucking weird person. <laughs> she is. No, uh, I appreciate it. You know, your your unique qualities and everything. Um, but I just feel like, yeah, yeah the, the, the title of this Casual Geographic video, When You Are the Child Support, I saw that and I was like, damn, this makes me think in a Our different fathers? way, kind of, this makes me think in a different way about that situation. But mm -hmm. anyway. All right. Are fathers really that necessary? You know, it's crazy we can even ask a question like that. You want to know how important father figures actually are? Studies done in South Africa found that without the presence of older, mature bull elephants, the younger bachelor males were more likely to exhibit aggressive, destructive, and straight-up menace behavior, escalating all the way to them projecting their daddy That's issues on the south side of a rhino. Oh. And it wasn't until more seasoned bulls were brought back in that the rhino-centric assaults decreased. And even though with humans the stakes don't usually involve a rhino's rectum, subtracting fathers from a population can be just as problematic. I'm not going to list all the ways because then we'll be here forever, just know that a majority of the prison population wouldn't even be there in the first place if their fathers had come home from getting milk. Unless you're an athlete, in which case it's just a buff to your greatness. There are many Man. fathers in nature that are just as important, and seahorses aren't really one of them. We call seahorses amazing fathers, and really all they do is spunk out new recruits to the senses from their okay. midsection. It's really no different than what every 14 year old does the moment they discover incognito. Except with them, their swimmers aren't undercooked. And I'm sorry if that ruins seahorses for you. No, like, actually, I'm sorry. So sorry, in fact, that with the help of ChatGBT, I'm oh. going to genuinely apologize for my actions. Oh by my not God. That's hilarious. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. ChatGPT is just one of the services provided by the sponsor of this video, Opera Browser. Opera is considered the best browser for tech fans, and it's the first browser to go live with integrated generative AI tools, which means you can finally get the answers to the truly hard-hitting questions of life. No need to go monkey branching from tab to tab when AI has all the answers you'll ever need. But like a seahorse after his fifth contraction, there's still somehow more. Opera also has browser-native contextual AI prompts. What that means is you can request AI assistance based on what content you're viewing with just a click. If you're like me and your attention span has eroded to the point where you'd rather mop a beach wow. than read more than one page at a time, one of these AI tools lets you shorten a long read into more digestible chunks. And so much more. If you get Opera using the link in the description, you'll get these AI prompts on default along with ChatGPT already in your sidebar. You can also create a pin board of pretty much anything you're interested in. You can actually check out my pin board in the description. You also mm. get to choose from a library of thousands of wallpapers to personalize your browser. Cool. So make sure you use my link below to download Opera and shout out to Opera for sponsoring this video. But in all seriousness, yes, oh, seahorses are the, the only fathers that give birth and they do so after six weeks of incubating his brood of up to and over a thousand babies God in his belly. Damn, now add in the fact boy. that seahorses will often mate for life and reinforce their pair bond with a synchronized dance and Stevie Wonder can see how seahorses got the reputation of being the best fathers in the animal kingdom except the male seahorse will occasionally cannibalize a small percentage of the kids he pops out oh. and while it's true a baby seahorse is called a fry a papa Look seahorse acts a little too accordingly by turning his unluckiest children into an infinite food hack not enough to truly threaten the survival of the next generation sense, but just enough for me to so confidently little. say you can like find about 10 better fathers in nature. Do that like for example the fox like the seahorse, the red fox oh is God. often monogamous, meaning that one Spider-Verse line can easily apply to them too. At first, Father Fox has a full-time job bringing back food to his partner who stays home with the kids. But as they get older, that's when the tough love starts. Once the foxlets start getting bigger and more capable, their dad starts showing up with less and less food. Instead, he'll start burying the extra food near the den and even cover it up with twigs and brush in order to what teach his fuck? kids how to be more independent and find Aww. it themselves. And that's not the only life lesson served by Father Fox. Because in an area where foxes were getting murked by coyotes, researchers noticed male foxes playing with their kids by chasing and ambushing them. Almost like they were trying to teach the next generation how to avoid predators. And like speaking China. of coyotes, you'll find that there are some W dads too. Coyotes are just as loyal, and sometimes even death doesn't make them find a new mate. Coyote couples typically hunt together, but as scavengers who will often finesse food from much bigger threats like wolves and bears, it's usually the male that'll stake out a possible bounty first while his mate watches from a safe distance. Wow. That way if worse comes to worse and he gets put on a shirt, his mate still has a chance to raise their children as a single mother. You wouldn't see a seahorse do that. And honestly, wild candids in general kind of break the rule of male mammals being more of a deadbeat than a roadside raccoon. Father wolves are just as overprotective as you'd expect. Here, you can see a father wolf harassing a black bear and trying to get Damn. it to chase him after the bear wandered and got too close to his pups hidden near some trees. And African wild dogs will actually let the Look pups feed first thing, rather dude. than have the most alpha male get first serves and have everyone else fall in line. They've also been known to spend days looking for any lost pups, but the ears. gold standard of dog oh fathers God. would have to be the golden jackal. They're another couple that takes till death seriously, and like with coyotes, they'll often go grocery shopping together. And when his partner's pregnant, Father oh, Jackal yes. digs a burrow for his mate to rest in, and he'll defend that den with his life if it gets to that point. 
and once the pups are born, the male jackal will go to any lengths to find enough food, even if it means squaring up with wild boars Holy or shit. stealing food from right under the nose of tigers or wolves. And even though he risks everything for food, most of what he eats just gets regurgitated back at the den for his kids. They're top tier dads, because if anything ever happened to the male jackal, there's a good chance the mother wouldn't be able to keep the kids alive on her own. So yeah, wild dogs seem to mostly beat the deadbeat dad allegations, but at least they have a partner they can count on. Meanwhile, the great value ostrich of the Andes has to hard carry the whole bloodline by himself. The Rhea is a player who runs game on up to 10 females who all take turns dropping <laughs> eggs in his nest. That's about as far as Mother Rios contribute as they leave the male to look after the massive family by himself. Daddy Rio will even live off a quarter of the food he normally would, since he'd rather starve than leave his nest of up to 60 eggs unsupervised for too long. Being a stay-at-home single father only gets more difficult after they hatch, where Latin Big Bird acts as their bodyguard, while also teaching his class of chicks where to find food and where to best avoid becoming it. All while his baby moms try out every flavor of male like samples at a mall, because female Rios are for the whole prairie. But I'm pretty sure the father Rio likes it that way, since once the eggs are laid, he'll chase off anything with a pulse that even looks at them the wrong way, even if anything includes an amorous female. Daddy Rio puts his kid- actually that sounds kind of gross. Father Rio puts his kids first, but he's not the only member of the rat type family that does. Cast warriors are like if nature engineered an animal with the sole goal of f***ing with my sanity. But even this Jurassic drumstick finds time to be Jurassic a Jurassic drumstick. drumstick. Female cassowaries also social distance from their eggs and children, leaving the parenting all up to the male. And even though cast warriors are actually really shy and would rather run from smoke than to it, a male will turn it up to 100 if his children are involved. And just like his cousin the Rhea, the blueberry flavored paralysis chicken spends 9 months raising his clutch of chicks, teaching them how to survive until they can successfully do it on their own. In fact, cast warriors are such devoted oh, dads that the whole reason we call them the most dangerous bird in the world is likely because of the lengths we've seen them go to protect their children. In 2012, a photographer was charged and yeeted off a cliff by a hostile cassowary that I am Holy now willing shit. to bet had some kids in the area. But considering both them and Rias have to carry the well-being of their entire family on their backs, I don't blame them for lashing out. The giant water bug does the same thing, except with them, it gets ridiculously literal. Water bugs will lay their eggs above the water, and it's the male that stands guard and defends them against risks to minor safety, which includes scaring off other females that would easily turn his pride and joy into protein powder. There's even Holy one type shit. of water bug that'll physically carry up to 150 eggs no. all on his back. No. With his future progeny glued to him, the male water bug is stuck like that for weeks, while his mate gets to go out and act like a free agent switching teams and looks for a new male to dump dependence on. In this time, the father water bug can't fly, can't eat as much, he has to constantly climb up to the surface to let like get air, and he's a much easier target for predators. But at least with him, the back-breaking labor of being a father ends the moment they hatch. I'm sure there's a certain crocodilian that wishes it was that easy. You probably wouldn't expect a cold-blooded predatory sledgehammer to have a section in a video about great fathers. But if that were true, this picture wouldn't exist. This wow. is a Melgario acting as a sentient school bus for about a hundred of his kids. Normally, croc miners ride I shotgun that. inside their parents' jaws. But armed with a mouthpiece designed for griefing fish, instead they choose to be on water bug timing. Just like the Rhea, the guy Dario flexes a whole harem of females as procreation partners, and he gets to be the one to play one-man daycare as he guards them all. He might not be close to the single father the Rhea, <laughs> Cassowary, and Waterbug are since his mates don't go out wow. for milk indefinitely, but Gario's might be the most unexpected animal on here. And right there with him are frogs. For example, the smooth guardian what? frog, that's his name by the way, I'm not making that up, he flexes his parental prowess by being the one to stay with the eggs and guard them after his mate lays them into the ground. And after almost two weeks of waiting, he's the one that carries the tadpoles on his back after wow. they hatch, and he's the one that finds a nice pool for his brood to finish that. developing in. And it's not like he just dumps them in the first source of water he finds. Nah, not only are they particular about where and what they put their tadpoles in, the father will even equally divide his children between pools if he can. Like if he's carrying 20 tadpoles, he'll put 10 in one pool, 10 in the other. They're not the only frogs that take a cue from Holy Dom shit. Toretto and put family first. The giant African bullfrog can have not hundreds, but thousands of little ankle biters in a breeding season, and wow. it's the dad that looks after them all. And for almost a month, he defends them like a slimy, water-loving pit bull, biting anything that even looks like a threat. Yeah, they have teeth, by the way. Oh, He'll even shit. go out of his way to dig a canal to a bigger pond if he notices that the one his kids are swimming in starts to dry up. They're solid fathers, although admittedly they can resort to seahorse behavior by eating some of the kids he was guarding. Yeah. But then again, cannibalism is kind of what frogs do. Darwin's frog will also eat his own children, but with them, they have a process. After his girl lays and leaves, once again, he's like the one lake, that sits dude, with them and waits crazy. for them to start moving. Once they do, instead of backpacking his family, Darwin's frog takes it a step further by swallowing the eggs, letting them develop in his vocal sacs. And when they're ready, he delivers them to the world by puking his progeny out. And depending on how you define birth, you can argue that seahorses aren't the only fathers that qualify for paternity leave. What? They're definitely not the only fish. Another unlikely superhero father is a type of fish known as the stickleback. 
It starts with the male <laughs> step of that creating like a nest that. for his female to lay their eggs in, and he holds the nest together using a special glue formed by his kidneys. That stuff isn't exactly easy to make, and the stronger the current of the river he's in, the more kidney glue he has to use in his house. And sometimes the cost of making his own product means he dies soon after spawning. But the ones that don't what? get Mufasa in the process revolve their entire lives around their families. They constantly have to chase off Jack's rivals, and he'll spend most of the day fanning his clutch of eggs so that they can get enough oxygen while also washing away parasites and waste. And they'll even go as far as guarding the fry up to a week after they hatch. And he's not the only fish that's known for playing Mr. Mom. The common goby often raises hundreds of eggs by himself, the same way the stickleback does. Except the goby's also likely to eat the eggs that take the longest to hatch, just so he can dive back into the dating pool sooner, so... Maybe seahorses aren't that bad. But if you're looking for a father that you can trust with 100% of your children, shit. we gotta talk monkeys. With golden lion tamarins, it really does take a village to raise a baby, and nobody takes the more of a role than the father. The ginger he's the monkey. one that grooms, plays with, and carries his kid around. In fact, the only time he leaves them with the mother is so they can nurse, and even then, he takes them right back. Not only that, but he'll even act as a midwife during birth, as the father will help clean the baby fresh out the womb what? and even bite off the umbilical cord. Aww. And it's far from just them. Owl monkeys also have the father okay. as the de facto parent, with the mom only he's carrying around the injury for the fingers. first week. And now you we know why. Like mother and mama sets like the golden tamarind often have to pop about twins that add up to 25% of her body weight. Birth is not a fun process and it's now believed that the physical toll it takes on the mother is why the males are the ones that take the lead in parenting. Meaning, marmosets are the only other animals that figured out the concept of maternity leave. There's also the fact that males literally put their families first. You see, the thing is, with most male mammals, an ovulating female instantly triggers a rise in testosterone. It's why those same male mammals are often good at making babies, not so much raising them. But a study showed that while single mateless marmosets reacted strongly to pheromones from females, the spoken for father marmosets really Aww. couldn't care less. So not only are they devoted fathers, they're also loyal enough husbands to reject any females for their Aww, families. Good for them. Some humans can't relate to that. And we never thought a tiger could either, but this one managed to change a lot of what we thought we knew about them. P243 was a male tiger in an Indian reserve who confused scientists by single-handedly raising four cubs after his mate and baby mother passed tense. He'd share his kills with them, seemingly patrol the cubs' territory for danger. There was even a time where he brought down a whole cow, but didn't take any for himself and instead left it all for his cubs. And even though at this time he was an eligible bachelor, for a while it seemed like 243 was actively rejecting the advances of females just to keep his cubs a priority. This flew in the face of everything Damn. we originally thought about male tigers being just as deadbeat as their prey. And there's a good chance this wasn't just an exception. There was another case where a male named T25 was caught playing protector for a pair of orphan cubs that weren't even his. So there's a solid chance that we got it all wrong and that tiger dads are just as capable of stepping up. Just like some birds. Cause when a mother kestrel got bambied by some owls, it was the father kestrel that went on to carry the family. And unlike the Rhea, kestrel males don't typically look after their chicks, they usually just provide food, but it seemed that the widower knew that wouldn't be enough. The males slowly but surely started doing all the things the mother would've. Brooding them, feeding them, keeping them warm, and even tearing up the food he brought into tiny pieces the weeks old chicks could eat. Keep in mind, he wasn't good at it at first, and researchers genuinely wondered if he'd be able to pull through for them. In fact, it took a couple tries for him to realize that his chicks wouldn't eat if he didn't do the bird equivalent of cutting up their food for them. Yeah. But that's the thing, it didn't come naturally and he still kept trying for his chicks and he wow. still managed to raise them. But there is no animal that does more for his chick than the last animal in this video. Be honest, you knew there was no way Emperor Penguins wouldn't get wow. mentioned in a video about fathers. Look at and it's cause male emperors have to spend two months straight alone with their egg. That's two months of complete darkness while yeah. taking negative 40 Are degrees Fahrenheit and getting yeah. smacked yeah. by 120 mile per hour winds. So cold that the father happens to fumble the egg onto the ground, it takes less than a minute for the chicken side to enter the gulag. The margin for error is so small that for the two months of ice chilled, sun deprived hell, the penguin dad barely moves at all since the entire time he's balancing the egg on his feet. And when That's the egg crazy. finally hatches, the fasting father feeds his baby with a crop milk made from a gland in his throat, <laughs> making him only one of three birds that uses crop milk. It isn't until the mom finally returns from sea that they switch off and the father can finally feed himself. But by the time he waddles all the way to the breeding ground, pulls a female, does a two month mannequin challenge in Satan's icebox, gets Man. relieved by the mother and waddles back to sea, <laughs> it's been a good four months since he's eaten anything during which he loses almost half of his body weight in the process. It's like when 50 Cent nearly became a hashtag for a movie I guarantee none of you actually watched. I know I didn't. And that's assuming his mate does come back and doesn't get put on a milk carton while out fishing. At the end of the day, Emperor Penguin Dads get griefed by every force of nature, all for their little gray baby face tap dancing mini him. And because of all that, I think it's fair to say Emperor Penguin Dads are the goats of fatherhood. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother. Shout out to things. all the fathers out there for real. Y'all really don't get enough credit. So if you have a oh father, let God. him know you appreciate him. Don't wait for a calendar or Instagram to tell you to. And if you don't have a father, my condolences. I know today's probably not the best for you. Just try to take care of yourself.
And if you don't have a father or a mother, damn, okay, Batman, who are your ops? May you turn all that character development into something positive. Oh, Just know, you better have God. a banging college essay. Shout out to Opera for sponsoring this video. Shout out to my father for sponsoring me in more oh, ways than shit. one. And I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Oh. Look at him. He went in at the end I of was, that. I was wondering if anybody ever felt any kind of way because he's always like, hug your mom and yeah. your dad or whatever. And it's like, what if they don't? I've always thought like, oh, I don't know. Like, what if they didn't have? And then, uh, yeah. There's that. There's that. There's that. A banging college essay. Holy I dang. fuck. Whew. Yeah. Wow, dude. I didn't realize that um, birds were capable of compassion like that. Like, supposedly... Like bird that... Birds, lizards, and things with brains similar to those... Reptilian are, brains. Yeah, are not able to feel compassion. I don't know about all that. I, it's just like, how would we know, though? How would we know? I it's don't like even the same know parts of their brain. Compassion, like, as it's just like, just in them to like want their offspring to survive. My DNA must continue yeah. on. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. This shit's like but a I would, tiger. If you would have asked dad. me before I saw this, how much money I would put on the line for a bird to not well, give a fuck. Well, it's not. It's, it doesn't seem like it happens all the time. It's just right. it could happen. So I, I didn't mean, even think that it could happen, mm. though. So that was a very big surprise for me. The Gator Dad one, I've seen pictures of that, but I didn't know it was the dad. I just assumed that it was the mom because they would be born and then swim up on her back yeah, or something. Yeah, no. But there he I think sat. I knew that it was the dad, but the other ones can't do that because of the way that their mouths they carry are shaped. Them, yeah, well, that one's mouth is shaped like a yeah. song or something. It's just like... A phallic looking say, uh, face. Like a pencil or something. It's a very thin. Literally a crocodilic dick face. Jesus going on. Christ. <laughs> that uh, shit was crazy. Give me the. I was going to say the remote. The remote. Give me the give damn me remote. remote. Remote There was one on here. Dude, the baby seahorses are so adorable. I would love to have little bitty, like, yeah? tank with the little bitty seahorses. That. No, oh, that. The beetle thing, the water beetle. Up, no, see. I hate that. Oh, that reminds me of some That's Last like of the, Us type shit. What is the like tripod phobia or whatever? Mm -hmm. The the holes thing. It's like the in. It's like not holes, but it, it just makes me want to vomit. Gross. Like I don't really have that problem, but when I look at that, that makes me want to fucking puke. Get it's it off the gross. screen. I mean, to me, and I And then see I was like, oh, you could just pop them. It's like, no, there's shit inside. It's not just like, there's shit in there. You can just pop them? Yeah, because it, it's not a hole. It, it's you almost like problems. a pimple. You got fucking <laughs> oh, I That know. is so gross. I know. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, there. I was also surprised by the... Uh, okay, at least move it on our screen. It's, it's <laughs> I zoomed was, in over here. I was very surprised by the... Um, Fox for hiding the food as a game to, that, teach, to teach to teach yeah to, to teach the babies uh, and the marmoset the 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 orange ones I don't think they're marmosets um the, but the orange monkeys most monkeys are pretty yeah good parents and they take but a lot even of time bots their umbilical cord and yeah. everything Mid plays midwife isn't that God. something what, um, what a good dad yeah but the tiger one is a big surprise for me I think that that one tiger we've heard about before very big one. outlier uh and that whole circumstance yes. was like what the fuck and wasn't there even a tiger mother that was going and adopting yes. other tiger babies say, that usually were getting... it's situational because for her she had lost her cubs mm -hmm. and so she's like i'm gonna fucking have some cubs regardless yeah. very interesting and then she even stole like a, a water buffalo or some shit yeah something crazy yeah i don't, I don't remember exactly what it was but uh yeah, fathers. They're important in nature. They're important in your life. Um, I think we went a little off the rails in the beginning because we were like, no, we're stuck on this child support well, issue. It, it, this is bringing up childhood title. trauma. The title of the video was You Are the Child Support. So to redeem, we, you know, we both love our dads. We, do, we love know? our dads. Yeah. They're, they're good dudes. Yeah. Nobody's perfect, but neither are we. And it's very awesome that we get to still, yeah. you know, have that. Yeah, um, absolutely. And for the people who don't, 
I'm not going to be as ruthless as Casual Geographic was. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And hopefully you have found that male presence in your life that has been constructive and good in the ways that uh, I have received some great fathering. Um, and hopefully you're doing okay because yeah. I love you and care about you. Hopefully that's okay for you. And uh, same for the Mother's Day thing. Hopefully you're good and I love you and... I'm not going to make Batman references. That's just way out there. That's crazy. But Harsh. Uh, Father's Day, you know, it's one of those days that just doesn't seem to be as big of a day as, as Mother's Day. And yeah, I saw a meme the other day, and it was like Mother's Day, and it was like the, the women were like at the spa, and they had like like maybe like a handbag for a per like a, a present and it's like this big sparkly day right and yeah. then it's like father's day it's like cracking open a beer watching tv and i was like yeah. well in defense of that i have expressed to my dad before like happy father's day you know we can make a big deal of this if you want to and he's like please god just leave me the fuck alone <laughs> like I don't care about this. It doesn't really matter to me. Thanks for caring, but like, I don't give a shit. That's an everyday thing. You yeah. Know, it's not a, I need a day about this. He's like, I'm proud of you. I'm glad that you happened. And thank God I didn't fuck it up, pretty much. It's what he says whenever I'm, yeah. you know, because like his, his scale for how he did is like, I graduated high school, I'm not in jail, and I'm still here. Like, that's his, because compared to right. other things around him sure. in, in our area in general sure. the fact that I'm not on some hard drugs I'm still alive I haven't been to jail is like a huge chunk of my cohorts yeah. so he, he sure. that's his yeah his baseline <laughs> I didn't his have baseline a high bar. might be a little bit skewed on yeah, that I but, did not have know. a high bar yeah uh, for making him proud to be a father so uh, thankful for that. Uh, thankful for you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us and watching Casual Geographic. Isn't it awesome that all these people decided to pay attention to us yeah. and what we think about this shit? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you care, but it's cool. It's cool. We love you for it. Hopefully you're having a great time um, and we appreciate you hanging out with us. You know, we do a bunch of other stuff, live streams and uh, things like that. Check out all the stuff we got linked down in the description. Thank you so much for being here for this one, but that's going to do it. See, See ya. Guys. Bye.